our last lesson, we talked about the architecture of a computer system. And we discussed the fact that inside any computer system, whether it be your mobile phone, your tablet, or your desktop PC, you will find the following components. Okay, so we discussed the fact that the most important component, the brain of our computer, is the CPU. Okay, now probably the second most important component is the RAM. Okay, now the RAM is really, really important because it acts as our computer's notebook. It's it's where it can temporarily store things. Now, unfortunately, it can only temporarily store data while the computer is on. So we can't survive without some form, as we discussed in the last lesson, without some form of other storage. Now, we talked in the last lesson about the fact that we have a hard disk drive. Okay, that's permanent storage, a hard disk drive. Now, I think to myself, well, why have we got, if, we, if this is only stores data temporarily, and this stores data permanently, I think to myself, well, why bother with this? Why don't we get rid of the RAM? Because it seems a bit useless. It can only store data temporarily. Why don't we get rid of the RAM and keep the hard disk drive and just use that? Well, actually, there's something really important that we need to understand here. And this is really, really important. The CPU is really, really fast. It wants to do everything as fast as possible. Okay, now, what that requires then, for this to do everything it needs to do as fast as possible, it needs to receive the instructions to tell it what it needs to do also as fast as possible. Now, that gives us a problem. If we've got rid of the RAM, then our instructions are going to come from the hard disk drive. Okay, so the instructions that the CPU needs to tell it what to do are going to come from the hard disk drive. The problem is the hard disk drive is like your grand. It's very, very, very slow. So if we just use the hard disk drive, the instructions coming from it wouldn't get to the CPU fast enough. We'd end up wasting all of that CPU time. So instead, we need the RAM because the RAM is really, really fast. Compared to the hard disk drive, this is your grand, this is Usain Bolt. This is the Usain Bolt of storage. It's really, really fast. So we need to keep this. It doesn't quite do the job we want. It's not perfect, but it does a great job of what it does, which is store things and allow the CPU to access them really, really fast. So before we can execute a program, what we must do is we know that that program is full of instructions and those instructions need to get into the CPU. They're going to get there from the RAM because that's really, really fast. But it's permanently stored in the hard disk drive. So we know our program must start here. The instructions are permanently stored in the hard disk drive, but then it gets moved. When it gets executed, it gets moved from the hard disk drive into the RAM so we can access those instructions really, really fast. Now, what we're going to learn about today, now we understand the relationship between the CPU and the RAM, is we're going to find out what happens inside the CPU. What's going on in that little piece of metal that we saw in our last video? So, I'm going to quickly wipe out what we've got on the board, and we're going to find out what happens inside that CPU. So, What's really important here is we remember that there's a relationship between the CPU, which I'm going to draw over here. So this is my processor. And over here, here is my, my main memory. Or we also call main memory RAM. Okay, now what's really, really important about main memory, it's really, really important about it, is it's addressable. Okay, we can access, this main memory is broken up into locations, so we can turn it into a table, just like this. And each one of these cells in this table, so each one of these, can be accessed using an address. And we, we can just make it really, really simple. We can say this cell here is address 00, zero this cell here is 0, 1, and if we do this in binary, obviously we'd start with 1, 0, and so on. I'm just going to keep it nice and simple. So this is 0, 2, this is 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, and 0, 6. So we've got some a 
addressable main memory. Now, inside that addressable main memory, we've already discussed it, is the instructions that we, uh, that we want to execute. So inside here are some instructions. And I'm going to write some instructions in here. Okay, so these are the instructions that we want to carry out. These are the instructions that we've got from our program. But they're in main memory, and what we need to do is we need to get them into the CPU. So there must be a process that takes those instructions from main memory, where they're stored temporarily, into the CPU. And that process is called the fetch, decode, execute process. So I'm going to write that nice and big at the top of the screen, uh, at the top here. Fetch, decode, execute. Now I don't know about you, but I'm really, really bad at getting up in the morning. Okay, so who is it the person that gets me up in the morning? Well, for me it's my wife, but for you I imagine it's your mother. Your mother is the drill sergeant. She's the one that tells you what to do. Get up, have some breakfast, get ready for school, get in the car. All right, she's the drill sergeant. She's the one that tells you what to do. Well, there needs to be someone like that in the CPU. There needs to be something that tells the CPU what to do. Now that is called, just like your mother, that is called, and I'm going to write up here CU, but that's called the control unit. The control unit is the thing that tells the processor what to do. And it only knows three instructions. Okay, if your mother only knew three things, three instructions, that'd be great. It only knows three instructions. Okay, all it can say are fetch, decode, execute, but it does that over and over and over again. So the control unit just starts off, fetch, decode, execute, fetch, decode, execute, over and over and over again. Okay, now how does it know how to do fetch, decode, execute? How many times should it do it? Right. Well, it's got, it's connected to a system clock. It's connected to a clock. And it's the clock that ticks and it executes. It goes fetch, decode, execute to those ticks. It shouts out fetch, decode, execute to those ticks. And that's why we measure CPUs by their speed. That's why it's measured in hertz, because this clock is measured in hertz. Okay? And when you look at the number of hertz, you are discovering how many times it can do fetch, decode, execute in a second. So that system clock is really, really important. So that control unit, the first thing it's going to do when we want to execute these instructions, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to fetch. It's going to fetch an instruction. The problem is, how does it know which instruction to fetch? Okay, so here's where we start thinking about what's inside here. So inside here, there must be something that tells us what got to go and fetch. Where are we going to fetch the instruction from? Don't forget, this is addressable. We need to know where we can find the, uh, the instruction that we are looking for. Okay, well, fortunately for us, inside the, the central processing unit, there is something called a register. And this register, it's a very tiny memory location. It's measured in bits, okay, probably 32 or 64 bits. And there are several of them inside our Processor. Now the one we're going to meet right now is called the program counter. Okay? Now the program counter is really, really important because it always contains the address of the next instruction that we need to fetch, decode, execute. Okay? So not the instruction that we are fetch, decoding and executing, but the, the next instruction. And not the instruction, but the address. So it tells us where in main memory we can find the next instruction. Okay, so we're going to start there. So our next instruction, our first instruction, in fact, would be 0, 0. So inside that program counter would be the value 0, 0. That's the address of the instruction that we need to go and fetch. Now, what happens to that instruction during the fetch part of the cycle? Well, this control unit shouts out fetch, and that instruction that address, sorry, travels from the program counter and it doesn't go very far. It just travels to another register, another register, so another tiny memory location measured in bits. Now this one is called the memory 
address register, the MAR. Now, as it suggests, it's a register, it's used to store addresses. It's called the memory address register. Okay, so we're still in the fetch part. The, the address has moved from the program counter to the MAR. Now, let's just slow down a little bit. What's going to happen to the address in the program counter? That is no longer the address of the next instruction. So that's going to go up by one. The next instruction is actually 0, 1. So that's going to become 0, 1. Now, in the memory address register is the address of the instruction that we want to fetch. Now, that needs that address doesn't need to be here. It needs to be over here so we can fetch that instruction. So it's going to travel from the memory address register across until it gets to main memory. Okay, now main memory will go, all right, I've got that address of the, I've got that instruction, I can find it at address zero, zero, here it is, here's that instruction. And that instruction is gonna travel back from main memory, but it's gonna travel on a different route, okay, or a different road, it's gonna take a different road, and it's gonna travel along here, and it's gonna end up in a different register. Okay, now the register it's gonna end up in is called the MDR. The MDR. Now that stands for memory data register. It's used, it's a register that stores data. So an instruction is a type of data. So we've just received an instruction from main memory and it's gonna get stored in the MDR before it moves on. Where does it move on to? That's really, really important because we need to know that because we can't do the decode execute part until the fetch part gets complete. And we haven't completed it until that instruction moves from the memory data register to our final register. Okay, and our final register is called the CIR, the current instruction register. So that instruction is going to come from the MDR and it's going to end up in the current instruction register. Now, once our instruction is in the current instruction register, that's the fetch part of the cycle complete. So we can now move on to the decode part of the cycle. Now, the decode part of the cycle, we don't really worry too much, but we're more interested in the execute part of the cycle. So now we're going to execute that instruction. Now, that instruction could be an add instru uh, instruction, it could be a subtract instruction, it could be an and instruction, it could be an or instruction. So there needs to be something in here that can do all of that for us. Those adds, those subtracts, the ands, the ors. Well, that's called the arithmetic logic unit, the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit. The arithmetic logic unit does all our arithmetic. It does our logical expressions, okay? It's a great thing that does all of that work for us. Okay, now, for it to do that work, it's a bit like you in maths, okay? Can you just complete maths just in your head. I don't know about you, but I can't, okay? So it doesn't just do it all in the head. It needs to write some of it down as it goes. So it has its own little register, okay? And that register is called the accumulator. And the accumulator is different from these. These are all special purpose registers. They have, they have a purpose, just one purpose, and they're not used for anything else. The accumulator is a general purpose register. It can be used for anything the arithmetic logic unit wants to use it for. Okay, now that's the fetch, decode, execute cycle. Right. After we finish the execution, so once the arithmetic logic unit has done its job and it's executed the instruction, the control unit then goes off and does it all over again. Fetch, decode, execute. Okay, that's been the fetch, decode, execute cycle. I hope you've enjoyed that. Let's see what we're going to do tomorrow.